Creality's causing curious chatters, bamboos busting breaks, and moisture making materials moist. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 165. You're welcome. Let's get into it. Starting off, uh, water's wet, and it's a bit of a problem when you're dealing with hygroscopic materials. We've got a user here that says, and that, dear children, is why you should have a filament dryer and open the little little, which my dumb keister forgot to do. We can see they've got a, looks like a Sovel, I think it's a Gen 1 dual spool Sovel dryer. If I'm wrong, someone can correct me in the comments. But this is what happens when your dryers don't have adequate ventilation. Now, you might say, Grant, they've got four holes right there and they're plugged up and those look to be somewhat flared bases, so I think we're okay. But those are actually for where the Bowden tubes are supposed to come out if you run this in a reverse Bowden setup. And while technically that will help it purge some of the moisture out, it is better to have some sort of either cut or slot or some way for the moist air to get out and drier air to get in. Without that system of convection and getting that moisture out, the filament doesn't actually get dried. It just kind of becomes a soup because it's an amalgamation of things. It's a soup. And while it literally says to open lid slightly during drying, sometimes you forget to do it. For us, I kind of cheated, just drilled a hole in the top of it, and uh, might have decided that on the second uh, dryer that we had, I just wasn't going to deal with that, so I torched a piece of steel and just, you know, melted a slot into it, and it works fine. You need a way for that hot, damp air to get out. Once you have that, life is good. You can drill this if you want. Personally, I would do something with, like, a like a screwdriver, hit it with a torch, and then stab it through, because you're less likely to cause the acrylic to shatter. This has likely been sitting for a while, and this filament has likely been pretty damp. Most filament has some moisture in it, especially if you're using cardboard spools. I'm not saying that we had filament get flooded with salt water and then fresh water and are going to do an entire look at wet filament and just objectively nasty filament, but maybe you should get subscribed if that's the kind of thing you want to see, because we do awesome testing here at 3D Musketeers, and my name's Grant, and if you don't know the series, it is Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose, and if you are dealing with issues, we can help you out. You can tag us on the social medias, use the hashtag Print Fix, although Print Fix Friday also works, and we'll do what we can to help you out, although I personally tend to just watch Twitter, Blue Sky, and YouTube, so, you know, film a video if you want. But we can see here that Illuminated Technologies is saying that they installed Linear Rail Kit on the Y-axis of their CR-10 Max in hopes of eliminating the noise during auto bed leveling, aka G29. Helped somewhat. It's not present during normal printing. Any suggestions? This has been plaguing me for two years after installing the Bontech DDX V3, which I don't actually think has anything to do with it. But let's watch this video and see what we get. That's the BL touch, that's normal. Oh, okay. So it's resonating, right? The machine is resonating as it's making those moves. Something is loose and rattling, whether it's the screen, the motors, the table that the machine itself is sitting on. Something is likely rattling. There's a couple of things you can do. One, add mass. So put the printer on a piece of concrete. Put it on something that will keep it from coupling to the surface below it. You want to decouple these things from each other so that they don't transmit those vibrations from one thing to the next. The other thing to do is to look and make sure that all of your screws and rails and things are tight. Anything that is even remotely loose can cause problems here and result in things, well, vibrating more than they should. Now, I also recognize that this only happens during the auto bed leveling sequence, which while it does suck, if it doesn't happen during printing, I don't know if I'd worry too much about it. I don't think the Bontech DDX V3 has anything to do with it, but check to make sure it's mounted really well. And if you want to idiot check yourself, if you will, put the old extruder back on and see what happens. I would guess it's still going to resonate like you're seeing it. It's just hitting a frequency that happens to be louder 
than other frequencies. It's actually why we do input shaping and phase stepping and things like that, because we're getting rid of those resonances by actively canceling them. And we actually talked with a guy that knows a ton about all of this. He's literally one of the unicorn chasers. Reth, we'll card to his stream so you guys can take a listen if you're interested in learning more about input shaping and why it's freaking awesome. So I think that might have something to do with it, that maybe the surface that it's on is resonating too. Maybe there's part of the bed is resonating. Something here is resonating. It's clearly in the Y axis. So I would look just make sure everything is nice and tight. Make sure the bolts are tight. The belt looks okay just from looking at it, but you know, always verify and check that stuff. I think it's a resonance thing. I'd love to know from you guys. What do you think? How would you handle something like this? Me, I want to decouple it. I want to make sure everything's nice and tight, and then I want to see what happens from there. But maybe you guys have some other options here for illuminated technologies. Love to know your thoughts. Next up from Discord user DK Shadow. I don't know if you do want to join the awesome crew of people in our private Discord server, you can do so at the $10 tier and higher via any of the platforms linked in that description. He's got a bamboo here that doesn't have a blob of doom, but it's looking a little bent here. And upon further inspection, it's actually not bent. It's likely clogged really, really bad. What happened here is that instead of skipping, instead of grinding, the bamboo said, see you later to the entire hot side of the hot end and pushed it out. See, on a bamboo, the hot end and nozzle are a singular assembly and they're pressed together. And under normal circumstances, this really isn't an issue. But under theoretically extreme circumstances where you've got a pretty serious clog, it is technically possible for this kind of thing to occur. So while if he did have the proper tools, he could press it all back together for the price of a bamboo hot end. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. We've seen this happen a couple of times, and I don't know if this is a thing that happens over time with heat cycling and wear and tear, and then a big clog does it, or if it is just a big clog can handle it on any hot end, new or old. If you've experienced this, I'd love to know what caused it or what you believe caused it. Thankfully, DK caught it relatively quickly, so not a ton of damage done, but it does appear here that he was running a pressure advanced setup. Best thing to do here is replace it. Once that comes apart, there's probably no chance of getting it back together, but I mean, hey, if you wanted to take the entire thing apart, torch the hot end to clear out the clog and manually do cold pulls, you could try to reseed it, but it does look like there might be some sort of like Loctite green, some sort of anaerobic high temp chemical bonding agent of sorts in there. So it probably won't hold, but like you don't really have anything to lose by trying. It's always good to have spare parts. You could quickly hot swap this in place, but if you don't have spare parts, at least you don't have to buy a complete hot end if you don't want, but we do recommend that you do. It's not that much more expensive. I would say just get it. This one is a little bit curious here from Second Layer Printing saying, At FL Sun Official, we need to talk about the capacitors I just found in my print fail. Um, yeah, you don't want caps exploding off of what I assume is a closed loop stepper driver. You, you, you don't want that. So we've got what? for what appear to be where the caps were potentially. That is no bueno. That is actually close to starting a fire and technically kind of did. Thankfully, it's just a few caps. Everything is okay. And we can see that Brian.exe had something similar happen to theirs where two of them started smoking and one of them caught fire. The replacements FL Sun sent haven't worked since. Interesting. I only got 10 hours out of printing total. Now I'm in the middle of adding 5160s to get this printer up and running again. You can do that, but like if you only had like 10 hours of printing, just return the dang printer. I hope that FL, and it looks like FL Sun did reply, and they replied within two hours. Hey, you know what? That's pretty darn good. Give you credit where it's due there, FL Sun. You're on top of that one. This shouldn't happen, obviously, right? It shouldn't happen. Motor drivers should not get hot enough to have capacitors get thrown off the board because they 
literally popped and exploded. And we've seen a trend here of companies really just trying to push every ounce they can out of their machines with minimal safety factors. As we saw with the Chidi Plus 4, the original firmware was drawing close to six amps for just the chamber heater, which it has a fuse rated for four amps, and that fuse never popped. It never blew, and we still to this day don't know why. And even with the latest firmware, the stock inductor choke module that it comes with got up to over 200 Celsius, and that's dangerous. You shouldn't be running printers at the bleeding edge like this. I understand wanting to push every freaking ounce that you can out of these machines but you still have to have a reasonable safety factor when this becomes a consumer product because consumers shouldn't have to do this. Machines shouldn't be running this close to failure. Consumers want reliability. When you're spending the kind of money that those machines command, you expect things not to have problems like this. Yes, a small problem every now and then is totally fine, but boards that are literally catching fire. We can see burn marks that caught fire. That is enough for me to say that other users need to do testing. We should not as users be forced to be beta testers for something that we're paying for. Consumers that buy machines day one that pre-order them should not under any circumstances be exposed to this level of problems with machinery. That's where I'm at. I'd love to know your all's thoughts down below. In the same place I'd like to see our awesome channel member names who are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all for making these videos possible. If you made it this far, leave a like. We do greatly appreciate it. And if you do want to join, hey, starts at a buck. Links below. You know where to find them. Check out the rest of the series here at Print Fix Friday if you want to see print failures and how we fix them. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.